So most of the time when I was editing a markdown files like changelog or readme files, I was doing this inside the Xcode. But as you can know, Xcode does not support a live preview of our markdown files. So I was looking for a better alternative. Today I want to show you a couple of interesting markdown editors. My name is Mike and let's get started. What I need from Markdown Editor is first of all a preview. It doesn't have to be a live preview, I just need to check if the formatting is all right. It also has to be a standalone application. I don't want to check this on the website if the formatting is all right. And it needs to support external files. Some of the applications are library based and you need to import each file, which is not very convenient. And that's pretty much it. All of the apps that I've tried are quite similar, although there are some unique features which make a certain app more appropriate for a specific job. The first app that I would like to show you is the Markdown. It is quite simple app, like the simple editor, simple Markdown editor. You have the editor on the left hand side and the preview on the right hand side. Although you can hide the preview pane and just focus on writing. What I liked about it is that although it's like a simple app, you can customize like almost everything here. You can turn off the update preview automatically as you type. Each time you will type something, it will not be automatically updated. You can then just choose view render markdown and it will be automatically rendered. If you don't like it, you can put the editor on the right so it will be switched and the editor will be here, the preview will be here. You can also turn on the show word count and then on the bottom you will see the number of words which is quite handy if you were for example writing an article and you would like to know how long it is. Inside the editor tab you can change the base font or a theme. You can choose from the build in different styles that you would like to see the editor. As you can see the preview is not being uh, changed. We'll see this inside the rendering. This is nice if you would like to for example have a different style for the rendering. If you, for example, would like to see how it will look like on the GitHub, you can just choose it. You can also apply your CSS file. You can just like go here, styles, and choose or change or duplicate any CSS file that you have here. You load, and then you can just use it. Inside the editor, there's option scroll past end. You may know this from the Xcode. Right now you can just scroll even though there's like no more space here. If you will turn this off, you cannot scroll any further. Inside the rendering tab, there is this option detect Jekyll front matter. This may be a already niche use case, but if you, for example, have a blog post, you will see that there is this header, which is like not a typical markdown format. But if you will enable this and render the markdown, you can see that all of those options are here inside this nice table. Overall, Markdown is a simple Markdown editor and yet very powerful and have all of the features that I need. Next one, let's check the Visual Studio Code. VS Code is my go-to Markdown editor when I'm inside the terminal. You may be familiar with the VS Code. It's a very robust editor and supports many different languages. As you can see, it handles quite well the additional non-Markdown style that are added by the Jekyll. Also, all of the additional HTML elements are handled really well, like this one. It, it will just render it. When you are editing a document, it's really handy that inside the preview, you will see the highlighted paragraph, this one. Sometimes when you are scrolling and the scroll is not in sync, you may just lost your position and this is really nice and as you can see, you know in which paragraph you are. VS Code has a lot of different settings, but in terms of the markdown, there is not that many. Although you can, for example, change the CSS preview, you can also like set your own CSS file as the markdown and you will have like a different preview. As I said, VS Code is really convenient when I'm like working inside the terminal and adding some changes to the readme file or adding some change logs. Otherwise, uh, editing, for example, like an article, it may not be the best idea. Last but not least, IA Writer. This one is my favorite, although it's a little different than the other editors. Just look and see how clean and minimalistic it is. I know that this is just a matter of preference and it does not add any additional functionality, but having this clean page 
it makes writing just easier for me. That's why I started to use this one for writing blog posts. Currently I'm working on my new personal website. So I'm using this one for all of the writings and it works really well for me. Let's see the settings. You can switch the appearance to dark mode and still preview it inside the light mode. Just go to templates and invert color for the web preview. And as you can see, it will be in the light mode. Let's write something. So the editor is in the dark mode and the preview is in the light mode. It's really handy. You can also <laughs> switch this and have the editor in the light mode and the preview in the dark mode. Inside the editor tab, there are additional settings. You can change the text size. You can also change the typography, although <laughs> there are only three to choose from. But absolutely the best feature here is the focus mode. Here we can choose the default one, focus scope, Let's say it to the paragraph. So if you will enable the focus mode, you will see that the text is being centered. Actually, let's open something from the library. Yeah, this one. Let's enable the focus mode. Choose enable focus mode. And as you can see, the focus text is here centered. Everything else is grayed out and you can just focus on the current paragraph. It is really helpful when you're writing an article, a new thought, and you just want to like focus on the current paragraph and not be distracted by anything else. As you already saw on the left-hand side, there is a library. This app is library focused, but you can still open external files. So by default, when you will start, your location will be the iCloud, and you will see that it creates a new directory, the IA writer, and everything by default is being saved here. Although you can still open an external file, but as you can see, let's choose something else. It opens a new window, and here you can see that there's like a small disclaimer that you are editing a document outside the IA right here library. So it still works with external files, but it encourages you to just add this to the location, just click here. And for example, let's add this whole directory. And as you can see, those that this directory will be here. You can just edit files as, as usual. And it's not being saved inside the iCloud. It's still just like the directory on disk. What's really handy is that when you are working on a file, you can also check the history of the file. This is really handy and allows you to go through the article and revert any changes that you, for example, don't like. There's one more editor that I would like to show you. I'll just mention it because I'm not uh, actually using it. It's Typora. What I like about this is that, as you can see, it is what you see is what you get, a type of editor. So when you are typing, the code is immediately being changed. And it's like the live preview, basically, like more re the real live preview. I'm not using this, but you may actually like it and give it a try. As you can see, there are like a lot of different features. So yeah, I hope that this will help you to find the best Markdown editor. As I said, there is no one fit for all. I use different apps for different use cases. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.